Hi guys, my name is Shai, and today I just kind of feel like bringing through a few encouraging messages. So I've got three oracle decks to choose from, so go ahead and pick whichever one seems to be drawing you in. We have the Wisdom of the Oracle deck, call it Baron Reed, the Starseed Oracle, and the Divine Animals Oracle. The timestamps will be below in the description box. Hello to everybody who chose the Wisdom of the Oracle deck and <laughs> I just got to put this out there. Is somebody watching this thirsty? Because <laughs> as soon as I like tuned into the collective energy here, I, I just became so thirsty and I just chugged this entire glass of lemon water. Um, and I feel like I could still drink more, even though I've actually had quite a bit to drink today. So I don't know what that is. If somebody watching this is thirsty, I don't know. It's contagious. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything particular in mind for these readings other than I just feel like we could all use a little bit of encouragement. So I'm just kind of putting it out there to the universe to see what kind of encouraging messages want to come through here. Okay, building blocks. Peace. <laughs> there we go. You are building your way to peace. You're building your road to peace, your path to peace. It is coming. <laughs> and not, it's like not just only peace is coming your way, okay? But the land of milk and honey. <laughs> if you've been hungry or thirsty, your hungers and your thirsts, all of your desires will soon be satisfied. Your thirst will be quenched. You know, your hunger will be satiated and your desires will be fulfilled. So I love this because, you know, you're on your path to peace. It is, it is coming. You are so close. Don't give up now. The, the message with the message here is, you know, you're building your road. You are walking the yellow brick road. Maybe somebody feels frustrated like you've been building and building and building and you're just feeling like you're not there yet. And I know that, you know, I've been battling. I've actually been purging some, like, cosmic frustration lately. It's just been, like, bubbling up. Yeah, okay, I can feel that coming through from somebody. Some of you are frustrated. You feel like you've been doing this for way too long and, like, when is it going to be my time? Why have I not seen any results? Should I just give up? No, okay? The peace you want is coming. The desires that you want to be fulfilled or satisfied, it, you, you're on your way. It, it's like, there's just... I know how, I, I know, I totally get it. I totally get it when you feel like you've been struggling for so long and somebody tells you that, you know, you're almost there, don't give up now. I know that can almost not really be encouraging because it can feel, it can almost like trigger your frustration even more. But but really, it, it's it's coming. It's it, You're so close. And here's the thing, okay, here's the thing. Don't think about this in terms of, time there there the universe is not playing tricks on you 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 are not being dragged along for any specific length of time so yes i understand completely that for you it might have felt like it's been forever like eons and eons and eons of lifetimes that you've been do, doing something right working through something struggling through something but there's no set amount of time that needs to pass. This, this, uh, this, this feeling of peace, the peace that you want, inner peace, peace on earth, peace in your family, just peace with life and the land of milk and honey where all of your desires <laughs> are satisfied and you live under a blessed rainbow, okay? There, there is, it's not about time. That's the thing. That's the thing here. So shift your perspective. It is not about time. It's about your frequency. So <sighs> the, 
the struggle that you've been in, in that you've been in, in <laughs> the struggle that you've been in, um, the thing you've been working on, whatever you've been building, it has been the carrot on the stick that has been helping you release a dense frequency or many types of dense frequencies that have been inside of you that you've just been working on releasing. So don't think about time anymore. That's not the story. The story is how can you release the dense frequency? So whatever feelings that have been being triggered inside of you, if it's like frustration, fear, like sorrow, grief, anger, bitterness, like all of those dense frequencies, right? Any any kind of dense frequency, that's the thing you need to let go of. That's the thing that your life is trying to get you to let go of. That's been the lesson. That's been the lesson. So you can release that instantly. You can release that right now. It's just a shift in your consciousness. And so it's simple, but it does, I know that doesn't mean it's easy, right? I've struggled my entire life to shift frequencies. I know exactly how difficult that can be, exactly how difficult that, that can be, but I know it can happen instantly or overnight or in a month, right? It can happen as quickly as you want it to. Just focus on the frequency and ask. It's like, just ask, okay? Just ask. Put it out to the universe. Universe, <laughs> guides, angels, star family, whoever, who, God, source, the goddess, who, who you ever you want to reach out to. Mother Mary, for some people, want, Mother Mary wants to help some of you, <laughs> or she would love to help all of you, right? But it, for those of you who resonate with Mother Mary, she is coming through, and I don't typically work with her, so the fact that she just came in is significant for somebody. <laughs> she wants to help you heal your heart and activate your high heart, okay? But there's just some kind of stuck energy in your heart that just needs to be released and then and then you flow into peace and then you see the rainbow and receive your milk and honey okay <laughs> then you will be satisfied so somebody was thirsty you know literally and figuratively <laughs> somebody was thirsty um now my crown chakra is tingling the top of my head is tingling um, you guys are being showered, absolutely showered, like inside and out with love and healing energies. And you just need to get to a point, and I think you're already there, right? By the time you're seeing this video, you're already there. You just need to say, like, help me find the healing. Help me release this feeling. Help me release these thoughts. Help me release this energy. Help me experience the forgiveness for some people maybe you're building your way to forgiveness whatever it is just put it out to the universe while you're meditating while you're in the shower while you're out in nature before you go to bed whatever while you're before you're falling asleep help me release this frequency help me find the healing help me whatever whatever it takes whatever it takes i am ready to release this i am ready to receive healing and i'm ready to find peace and i'm ready to be satisfied just put it out there and that it, this is also about you you are learning how to heal yourself right of course everything i'm you know releasing energies and coming into healing yeah you can absolutely go to energy healers for that beautiful if you feel like reaching out to another embodied being for for assistance absolutely do that but i think part of this is you're learning how to heal yourself and learning that you don't actually like self-healing and even healing others doesn't need to be complicated it's just a matter of intending that it happens and then asking the universe your guides whoever to help you walk through it, it it's just you can heal yourself you you truly truly can you don't need to go to anyone to receive healing you can heal yourself energetically just through releasing the old energy and then inviting in the new yeah uh, it, this you will <laughs> you will understand um and i just picked up this deck again i was actually just trying to move it and th this card that came out was co-create co-create um co-create your own healing right co-create your own healing you know, you might not be believing <laughs> at this moment that you can shift that quickly, that you can shift into a higher frequency state that easily or that simply. 
but this is when you can experience it maybe for the first time right maybe for the first time maybe some of you already know how to do this and you've already done it lots and you've just kind of gotten into a funk and you just needed a little reminder and you're like oh yeah of course I can heal myself I can release this I can shift my frequency at the drop of a hat I can you know rise up and move on maybe some of you have never experienced this before though maybe you have never uh, ha had an instant shift in consciousness in, or you know you've never been able to raise your frequency or really release and let go of something um you know maybe you've never experienced that before and but for you guys this makes it even more magical because this is like an initiation for you then right some of the, some of you this is review for some of you this will be the first of many many like infinitely more beautiful experiences because this is when you will heal yourself for the first time in a in a major way this is when you will shift up in frequency very quickly you know maybe it, it maybe it is a, that quick right maybe it's overnight maybe it's over the course of a week right whatever is quick to you the time is irrelevant but you can shift out of this and once you do that once that's literally all it takes it's all it takes is that first experience because after you experience it one time now you've experienced it now you believe it's real now you know that it's possible because you've done it right it, it's like doing something for the first time is always the hardest thing but you guys are you know either remembering and you know getting yourself back on track and carrying on or you're going to experience this beautiful self-healing and rapid upgrading in frequency for the first time in which case this is your <laughs> initiation into the rest of your life and okay this one fell out this is for you <laughs> In the name of love. See, you can walk this sky bridge. You can rise above it all and walk up there. This is just like the rainbow in this card, right? Just like the rainbow. You know, some of you, you might actually benefit from using visuals of rising up. Is it getting in a hot air balloon and flying up? Is it just levitating up off the ground? Is it catching a ride on a bird? Is it a dragon coming and swooping you off your feet? Is it like walking on a bridge above everything right get some kind of visual where you just rise up above it all rise up above it all in the name of love right your sacred calling leaves the impression of your soul on those you come across it isn't just the what that matters but also very important is the spirit in which you do each task for instance are you doing what makes you sing it is a fallacy to think that you have to suffer for your vocation. Your soul longs to express your individual genius and to leave a handprint of divinity on this life. Stretch beyond what you previously thought was possible. Open your heart to the plans the divine has for you, usually revealed to you through your intuition. Follow your extrasensory perception wholeheartedly to the healing places where dreams manifest. I'm going to leave you with that, guys. That was beautiful. Sending you so much love and light as you walk your path. Bye. Hello and welcome to everybody who chose the Starseed Oracle. Ooh, I'm getting shivers already. <laughs> Let's see what the message is for you guys. Um, I don't know. I don't know why, but I, um, I'm supposed to tell you about my nail polish. <laughs> um, how, you know, you can see I have two different colors going on here, right? And I don't know what it is, but when I paint my nails with two or sometimes three different colors, I can literally like feel the energy in my hands changing. Um, it'll be like, typically it's, it's even stronger when I do three colors, but even just with two colors, I can feel like... It, it like it, I swear it changes the way the energy th flows through my fingertips and it makes my hands feel more powerful. It's very strange. I don't know like what's causing that or why I notice it or why I'm telling you about it, but <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe lessons about like pay attention to color and how it makes you feel and pay attention to color 
and how it helps you shift energies or like manipulate energy. Um, maybe, maybe even for some of you, like if you're very sensitive to color, if you're very visual, um, really pay attention to the colors that you wear, the color, even the kind of color, colored makeup that you wear, color of your nail polish, the color of the, the things in your house. Um, if there's a, something in your house that is a color that just isn't vibing with you, and maybe you maybe you keep telling yourself, oh, I can't get rid of it just because I don't like the color, or somebody you live with is telling you, no, 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 like I I, we're not getting rid of it just because you don't like the color. Um, it's like, no, get get rid of it just because you don't like the color. You don't need any more of a reason than that. <laughs> um, and same thing, it's like really curate the colors, C curate the colors um, in your life. Some of you might not realize how much color is affecting your mood and your energy, and you know, it might seem frivolous to even like change the color of your wardrobe every week or change the color of the like wall hangings or posters of the artwork in your room every month or whatever. Um, but it's not. Th think it, even if it seems like a waste of money and time and energy to like be changing your like redecorating all the time or something, it's not. Because what if that has a huge impact on your energy and your emotional, like your energetic state, your emotional state, your mental state, your psychic ability, all of it. Um, the colors in your environment and on a, and that that you wear can make like a huge difference. And so don't feel silly or frivolous or like you're wasting your money or your time on curating the colors in your environment and on your body because it's like powerful and there's much, much, much more to, for you to learn um, about the power of color. Interesting. That's an interesting message for me to relay because I don't really know much about color. <laughs> um, maybe we're all going to be learning more about the power of color, so. I don't know. Let's get the cards. Star family. <laughs> get this to focus. You're part of a team of souls. Call in support. Um, you might even find that different colors, you, you will come to associate them with different like star civilizations, different types of um, star consciousness. Like, for example, I really associate Arcturian consciousness with purple and violet and Sirius with blue, especially like really deep, like deep, deep colors of blue, right? And the Pleiadian energy is like bright blue and like bright pink and, but also like but at the same time, also like like a vibrant pastel, like blue and pink and a little bit of violet, like bright. Can you be like neon pastel? I don't know if that's possible, <laughs> but, but like a, a bright, vibrant kind of pastel colors. Um, Orion, uh, red and orange, you know, different, different colors for different things. And that also your star family, like your star families or, you know, even just different types of star beings, star consciousness, send you signs and synchronicities through color. And if you're ever meditating or falling asleep or even just staring out the window, um, if you see like colors in your, in your vision, um, like, you know, maybe you don't think of yourself as clairvoyant. Maybe you feel like you don't really see very much in terms of psychic ability. But if you see smudges of colors in your vision, you know, either, either physically seeing it like with your eyes or just seeing it in, you know, in your, in your imagination, in your mind's eye, take note that is real that is real and it's a real communication i'm like really like really feeling this messages about colors <laughs> and here we have it the blue flame <laughs> spontaneous awakening activation integration time so this is a lot more than i expected to come through in this reading although i should have known like picking the starseed oracle it was going to be <laughs> like something big right because this blue flame, this is super intense. This is not, um, okay. And look at the bottom of the deck here is, um, we got the Hadar card. <laughs> I know a lot of people who watch my channel are my fellow Hadarian family. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we are. Um, before I continue talking about the blue flame, I want to keep mentioning, um, I want to talk about this Hadar energy a little bit because I haven't made a video about Hadar in a very long time. And it's because for me, the Hadarian energy has been sleeping. Okay, it's been sleeping. Um, 
I just, you know, every month, every season, every day, every year, every whatever, I flow through different energies and I can't really control what energies come through for me. And for like this time last year, like the Hadarian energy was exploding like like insane. Um, for, and then for like many, many months now, it's been sleeping. I haven't really felt uh, communication from like my personal Hadarian guides. Like I call them my, you know, my my Hadarian sisters, like the ones who aren't incarnated right now. I haven't like felt any really communication from them and I haven't really been getting anything about Hadar in general for several months. And I think that is because Hadarians are all learning something about boundaries, right? Always, always, always learning about boundaries. And the boundary game is quite... It, like, it... It's very amorphous. It, like, it bulges and shrinks. It's like our boundaries, ex like, our boundaries dissolve and then re-strengthen and then, like, fade away and then come back stronger. And they're pulsing in and out. Um, as we learn how to have fluid boundaries, right? And so we might go in and out of these stages of big, big spontaneous um, moments of connection and then retreating back into the hermit cave and then kind of assessing what we learned and figuring things out and then reestablishing boundaries. And that, I think, is directly... <sighs> how, how, do, how do I put it? I can say this about literally any type of like group consciousness, right? But here it's specifically coming up about Hadarians. And if you're watching this and you don't think you have anything to do with Hadar, this is, you know, just feel into this. This could resonate with you on a different level. Um, so whenever a Hadarian is working through something in their personal life, right? Um, the vast majority of the time that is like reflecting something that the greater Hadarian consciousness of all of the Hadarians and all of the three stars, the three stars that make up Hadar and all of the planets in the Hadarian star system, it were all like in microcosm working through some type of energy that the greater Hadarian consciousness is also like processing, processing, right? It, it, we are little bits of one whole, all working through a puzzle and all getting little pieces to the puzzle and then all putting it back together. So as we work through, as Hadarians all work through their, like, figuring out boundaries, to me that's actually helping to work through, reflect on, and ultimately energetically resolve the whole situation with <laughs> how did Hadar get invaded in the first place, you know, the whole... Um, collision of polarities that happened there with, you know, Hadar being extremely positively polarized and obviously the beings that were extremely negatively polarized, we clashed, <laughs> we collapsed in on, each, in on each other and imploded and on somehow, some way, the um, ancient, ancient Hadar lacked like proper energetic boundaries, like as a star system, <laughs> right? And we are literally working through that in our human lives. And as we, you know, in the, the highest frequency states of Hadar, it, where, you know, where the whole star system is completely healed, completely whole, all beautiful and well and good <laughs> and happy and healed, um, in ourselves, we are also working back towards that point we're working back towards that point interesting how i can say back towards right it's the <laughs> it's the paradox we're working back towards that point of wholeness within ourselves and as we each become more resolved and whole in ourselves and recovering from all experiences of victimization and especially releasing energies of victim mentality of victimhood we're releasing that out and as we come to understand the purpose and the process of the collision of polarity, that's how we find wholeness in ourselves. And that is how we will resynchronize with, you know, the version of like the quantum state of the Hadarian star system that is, has always been whole and always will be whole. And we do that by working through our boundaries. <laughs> so, okay, I did, I, um, 
did not expect that to be coming through at all. Um, but interesting that it's with this blue flame awakening card because I have, I have, a, I've had a speculation that I have not ever mentioned. I don't think to anybody, maybe I've mentioned it to one or two people like in private or in a private reading, but I have noticed that many, many people who resonate with the blue flame or with the blue ray beings, the blue, blue ray beings, many people connected to the blue ray beings also had lives in Hadar. Obviously the, the blue ray doesn't only go to Hadar, the blue ray is cosmic and goes everywhere. And it also, also has a very important like home base type of area in the Sirius star system. But there's also something like, I, I don't know, I just notice it. I just notice this connection between the blue ray and Hadar. And I mean, here we have it, right? Look at these cards. Look, at look, look. here we have it. Star family, <laughs> star family, Hadar, and the blue flame all together. So I'm going to take this as a confirmation on my private speculation that there is some type of connection between the blue ray and Hadar. And it really feels to me like... I'm just trying, I'm trying to keep this general enough because obviously I can't be like 100% certain about any of this, but I feel like there was like a segment or like a, like a, a strand, a strand of light within the blue ray, frequent, like bandwidth of frequencies, like a strand of light within the greater bandwidth of blue ray light, like went directly to Hadar and that I'm honestly, I'm almost tempted to say that all, <laughs> I'm so tempted to say that all Hadarians have this higher connection up through to the Blu-ray. I don't know if it ever makes sense to speak in absolutes. So I'm going to qualify this statement and say that I think a very large majority of Hadarians have um, a higher connection through to the Blu-ray, um, but uh, such a strong connection. So... <laughs> What do, what, do, what do I want to say about this blue ray energy, this blue f blue flame? Um, I want one more card, decks over here. But the blue this blue flame activation means that regardless of whatever else is happening, regardless of whether you resonate with Hadar or not, even regardless of whether you resonate with the blue ray or not, you know, presumably if you've listened to me talk this long, you resonate with one or both of them. But <laughs> whatever is going on with you, massive massive spiritual awakening and if you've already had a massive massive spiritual awakening this is next level okay this is you blasting through a glass ceiling this is kundalini awakening this is your third eye like opening up to such a wide degree and this is about aligning you with higher communication with your star family and also like going above and beyond above and beyond <laughs> everything that you thought you knew like there's going you're going to be receiving uh, new information that isn't and like you're receiving it yourself right like you, you are a channel you are a divine channel you are like connecting with entirely new groups of consciousness entirely new groups of consciousness and um ones that you might not even have an you might not be able to name like you could have some kind of experience or you could feel some type of energy coming through and you will go what is this like what what is this and you you could try to google it and you could try to figure it out you could try them ask them for a name but like there is no name there is no nothing you could look up on the internet. There is nothing. It's like you are going to each and every, each and every single one of you will be, re, will be receiving communication that can be, that could be very subtle, right? Don't expect this to be like channeling a verbal message or like hearing like audible messages. It's going to be very subtle, very subtle, but at the same time, like loud and clear, right? Those type of like subtle, um, impressions that you get those little intuitive hits those really like strange synchronicities that kind of make you think you might be losing your mind right it's going to be coming through very subtle but you will know you will know trust it trust it trust it trust it trust it and 
every single one of you has potential to be like receiving completely new information that you can't find anywhere, you can't prove anywhere, you can't even compare notes with your soul family, right? You might have, you know, like soul brothers and sisters walking around on earth and they might kind of get be getting like similar things, right? But everyone's going to be getting something entirely different because this is like, you're connecting with energy that like is brand new to earth like think of like ets from galaxies so distant you know you know we we talk about different types of star civilizations um and we're barely barely scratching the very first millimeter of the surface because sure we can all like list off some star civilizations from our galaxy but what about the other isn't there like 800 billion galaxies or something don't quote me on that i can't remember but it's like an absolutely unbelievably huge amount of galaxies in our physical universe. So what about all the beings from all of those galaxies, right? You could have been, you could have, you know, soul family from a galaxy on the other side of the universe and they could be contacting you and you could be like, how do I even understand this, right? How do I even understand it? How do you... <laughs> um, so, you know, the only thing you can do at this point is trust yourself and trust that you wouldn't be receiving this kind of uh, this energy if you weren't ready for it and just completely drop out of your mind drop out of having a plan drop out of having drop out of having to explain it just jump jump in right jump in jump right in <laughs> and this is also andromeda and andromedan energy adventure and saying yes to change this person it's, i know it's hard to see in the camera but we have a pair of feet this person has just jumped in like like dove into the water right and the water here is actually an eyeball in the middle of the cosmos so you are getting invited into galactic and intergalactic and caught like even beyond our universe right and if you ever if you guys ever feel that you know you're receiving communication from another universe or from outside of our universe or from the void itself like from outside of anywhere where there is like outside of reality, right? That that's all possible. It's all possible. Like as big as you can imagine it, you might think, oh, this is so crazy. Why would little old me be receiving this type of um, <laughs> like inspiration or these type of thoughts? It's like, no, there, there, there is like, trust me, there's nothing you, you can come up with that is too crazy. <laughs> it's all possible. So go big, go huge. And Just remember that whatever is playing out in your human life is somehow a mirror for these like interdimensional, intergalactic, transuniversal <laughs> energies. Um, it, it's all reflecting it. So actually learn to read your life. Learn to read reality itself, like your reality, as if it is a deck of oracle cards, right? When you wake up in the morning, what do you see? You walk down the street, what do you see? What type of things happen to you in a day? Every single thing that's happening to you, you can read it as if it's a deck of cards, right? You, do, you don't need a deck of cards to, to receive messages. You can literally just look out into your reality. Look at your hand. Look at your nail polish. Look at your hair. Look at that mole on your chin, right? Look at the birds outside the window. <laughs> um, like, look at the... A smudge of barbecue sauce on your cheeseburger <laughs> like you know just just look look around and especially look at the patterns look at the emotions people are having look at the the vibrations inside of you read it all read it all you are the reader of your reality be the reader of your reality and know that it, all of it every single bit of it is communicating something to you that's why it's like impossible to be too crazy because that's how intricate the universe is just think the universe doesn't waste anything it's like because well, the universe is so divinely intelligent it doesn't waste anything so every single thing that you can see including like a bag of chips in the garbage can <laughs> like the way it is like the way it is crumpled or like the crumbs on the ground or the fact that your roommate like didn't put the recycling in the recycling bin like what whatever it is all of it every single thing nothing is wasted everything is is mirroring something it's all just energy mirroring mirroring and manifesting
<sighs> yeah, so it's like read your reality, read your reality, because this is a huge up leveling to your ability to understand the nature of reality. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to draw one card to like get a final message for you guys. And I do have my eyes closed, but okay, we got, that's too many. Putting those back in. <laughs> try, try it again. I close my eyes when I'm shuffling these. So I either, either one will pop out or I will just feel which one it is. Sing your song, this beautiful yellow-breasted bird. Rise above and sing your song. Transform your worries into love notes for your divine friend to offer to the world. Let your deepest feelings inspire the composition of a new harmony. Recognize this as another form of the sacred expression of your soul's desire to remember the answers to life's most important questions. Why am I here? Am I living according to my true nature? Am I offering enough love to a torn world? Inspiration is seeking you in order to transport your heart out of its slumber of forgetfulness into the beauty of your spirit's true song. I'm going to leave you guys there, sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hello and welcome to everybody who chose the Divine Animals Oracle. I'm really excited to see what animals come through in this deck because I feel like, you know, Mother Nature and animals themselves are kicking it up a notch, like coming through stronger and harder than ever in their own evolution. Um, anybody else notice like their dog getting smarter and more independent? <laughs> um, but it's in their own evolution and also in their ways of assisting us. Because I think anybody, any of you who have pets, you know, beautiful animal soul family in your house that you take care of, right? I'm sure you get the feeling that, you know, it's like, <laughs> who's taking care of who here? <laughs> who is really, <laughs> who's really the one benefiting from this exchange, right? <laughs> I, you know, when I pet my cat, I tell her it is an honor and a privilege to be in her presence, you know? And when it is raining and I am waiting for my dog to finish his business so I can pick up after him, I tell him it is an honor and a privilege to take care of him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm an animal person, as you can tell. And we got the dog. These are all upside down. Um, okay. <laughs> we got the dog coming through. Companionship. This is that number eleven. Let me see. No, I got excited. I got excited over. It. It's actually number forty-one. <laughs> it looked like eleven. Okay. If you've been feeling alone, <laughs> if you feel alone. Just know that, okay, that this, the love and loyalty and companionship that you feel you lack is always there. It is always there. It is being offered to you from the entire, you know, the entire universe. But I feel for you guys, since you're tuning into the Divine Animals Oracle, that um, this is really an invitation to get like super reconnected on, um, really on a new level connected with the earth and with the animals, with the entire like earth kingdom, right? The entire earth kingdom. Even if you don't have a dog, right? If you don't have any pets, maybe you can't have any pets right now. And maybe even if you live in the city and you feel like you can't even get connected with nature, there is always nature around you. There is always nature. You can always find nature even in the most urbanized areas, right? And, and it's like this this loyalty, you know, that we often receive from our dog companions, right? The love, the unconditional love and loyalty that dogs can offer to the world. That's an extension of, of Gaia, right? That is an extension of the earth. The entire 
earth is just surrounding you with love and you are, you know, you might be feeling disconnected from that at times where you're not actively feeling, you know, the, the amount of love that it like that is surrounding you. And it's just an invitation to get reconnected with Gaia. And I, I don't know how to articulate what I mean about this next level of groundedness because it's a new thing I've been tuning into. Um, and it's something we're all going to be learning about in 2022. I feel very strongly. We're going to be learning about like on one level, it's a little bit like a return to our ancestors, to ancestral ways of connecting with the earth, right? But I feel like it's also more than that because the earth herself has been evolving and the plants and the animals themselves have been evolving. So for some people, yes, a return to ancestral traditions and an ancestral wisdom. Um, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting massive shivers with that. So for some of you, you're being led on a journey of, uh, you know, even maybe maybe you feel maybe it's your human ancestors in this life, but maybe you feel drawn to a different ancestral tradition. Uh, maybe it's you know outside of your culture in this life, um, and it's like just go wherever you're wherever you're drawn because there's a reason. Because in another life, right, you were part of that culture, right? You could have lived lives in every continent of this planet, right? So you don't need to feel like, you know, that you're limited to your specific ancestors in this life. You can follow those ancestral traditions to get reconnected with the earth. But I think there's also, we can go beyond that because the earth and the earth life system is has changed from when our ancestors walked the earth, right? It, it is different. It is evolving. And therefore our relationship with the earth is evolving. So maybe even if you felt like you've recently lost like your connection with the earth, it's because it's time for your connection with the earth to evolve, to match its evolution. And it's like, look for nature in everything. Okay. Your body is nature. So even if you're in a concrete room, your, your body is nature. Your body is full of life and nature. And it is an extension of Mother Gaia, right? Just think of all of the life in your body. And, you know, you eat food at every meal. <laughs> um, that is nature. It is just, it, you, you can't get away from it. I know sometimes in the modern world, we feel like we're completely out of touch with nature. And there is truth to that. But I think... Don't let that, don't, don't let that idea that you're cut off from nature, like don't let that become a self-fulfilling prophecy because there is so much nature that you can find just within your own body and within the food that you eat, right? If, even if, if that's, if that's the extent of your connection to nature, then you just start with that and that can, that's more than enough, right? You are connected to Gaia because you're in a body, right? <laughs> so, um, this butterfly card. I'm getting a really like motherly vibe coming off of this. So the butterfly, the soul, <sighs> butterfly magic, obviously all about transformation, right? If you have been, so whenever anything to do with butterflies comes through, if you have been in it, if you've been in the blender, if you've been in the cocoon, if you've been going through like something, right? It's because you've, you've been in your period of metamorphosis. And then when the butterfly magic comes through, you're coming out of the cocoon, you're expanding your wings and you're stretching your wings and getting yourself ready to fly, right? And this is part of that metamorphosis. Your connection to the earth is transforming. It is metamorphizing. It is becoming something new. And The earth is like speaking to you. The earth is speaking to you. It's this raven card. Okay. We got news. This raven's ear is wide open. <laughs> the news is coming in. Raven's often known as a messenger. Messenger energy. Can even be messages from the other side of the veil for some of you. Especially if you've like lost a loved one. Um, but for most of you, I, I feel like this is all, like, this whole message is like drawing you back down towards the earth, drawing you back down towards the earth, getting, 
newly acquainted. Imagine, to it feels like your relationship with the earth is changing and this is all going somewhere beautiful. It, it's like, imagine that the earth is an old friend, maybe a childhood friend. And when you were kids, you were great friends together and you completely understood each other and it was all beautiful and perfect. But then you grew up and you know, you went and led separate lives and you lost touch with each other and you haven't seen each other in maybe decades, right? And then you run into each other and you decide to go out for coffee. And at first th things are maybe a little bit weird because you know, you're catching up and you realize, oh, this person isn't really the same that they used to be, but you know, you're not the same as you used to be either. So, you, but you still feel drawn to come back together because you still feel like that sense of recognition. You still feel that sense of family. You still feel that sense of like wanting to make something of this relationship, right? But it's like things are a little strange at first because you need to get to know each other again and you need to learn new ways of communicating and you need to learn new, like, activities to, to do together. You need to find new ways of bonding and you need to understand each other first. So it's like, listen to the earth, listen to the pulse of the earth. Listen to the messages that come to you from the earth. Maybe some of you are actually more used to um, like receiving messages from above. Maybe you receive, you know, you communicate with your guides or your star family or your angels, whoever it is, you know, source itself. Maybe you, maybe you're typically more of like a top-down type of person, and now you're being guided into a more grounded experience. And don't worry, like that higher realm experience comes back later. It's just that you're in a phase for right now of getting connected with the earth, and this is really, really important. It's all about grounding you into your body, grounding you into the earth, and this is actually what you came here to do, right? You didn't come here just to constantly communicate with higher realms and to like leave your body. You know, you came here to get fully immersed into your body, fully, fully, fully immersed into your body, fully grounded into your body and fully grounded into the earth. So listen, learn to listen to the way that the earth speaks. Learn to listen to the way that the earth speaks and this comes full circle. <laughs> that is when you will feel at home. Once you become fully connected with the earth and once you learn to listen to the way the earth speaks that's when you start to feel the love and the companionship and the unconditional loyalty that is surrounding you like the love of a mother right remember that Gaia is your mother and she is she is here she is returning to you it's interesting that I'm getting this message because I'm happened to be filming this in December 1st 2021 and Neptune stationed to direct today after a long retrograde and I really felt, I always feel it really strongly when the planets like shift like that. And this theme I was getting from Neptune was that it's like the, the mother is returning, right? Return, it's simultaneously like mother is returning, but also return to the mother. It's like a simultaneous thing of this reunion with, you know, mother earth, right? Or with mother Neptune or with just, it's just mother archetypes, right? It's this mother energy, this mother energy, returning to this mother energy. And that is where you will be able to receive this like warm, warm blanket of love. And uh, one second, my, my actual dog is over here. He needs to get into his water. <laughs> Good boy. Go ahead. I had to hit the door to his water bowl closed. <laughs> um, let the animals guide you. <sighs> let whatever mother energy wants to come through for you guide you through this metamorphosis and through this new way of communication. You guys are learning to communicate with the earth in a new way. Um, I had my eyes closed when I was shuffling that, by the way. And let's see what this card has to say as a concluding message. Destiny delivers. Beautiful waterfalls. What you see is only part of the story that is unfolding for you. You've been visualizing, praying, and taking action, and yet everything remains the same. The more you push forward trying to make things happen faster, the greater is your inner resistance. Release your control and, as you let go, you will open yourself up to receive generous divine bounty. All the small acts of kindness you've offered to those in need have created a channel of good experiences to flow to you. 
wonderful surprises, unexpected manifestations, and blessings will be on their way to you now. You are being acknowledged for acting as an angel to others. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.